Hello and welcome to the first episode, uh, uh, video episode just makes me feel fancy, of Amateur Author. The point of this series is to give advice on writing and hopefully assist people in figuring out maybe where they're stuck or how to improve. I would like to start by saying I am not a professional author, hence the amateur in the title. I am just a beginner that loves what I do and wants to be able to help people if my advice in any way could assist someone. So the title of this video, as you can see, is called So You Want to Be an Author. And I'm going to go over 10 points that I think are really important to keep in mind when you start writing. Uh, point number one, no one can teach you how to write. People can give advice on how to improve your writing, give you advice on how to world build and make your characters, but the actual art of writing is completely up to you. We can't tell you, oh, you need to be able to write like this person, and no one can teach you how to write exactly like someone else. That is completely up to you as an author to find something that works for you, that speaks to you, and functions the way you want your writing to function. And this brings us into our second point. There is nothing that is truly original anymore. In this age where we have computers and laptops, I know they're the same thing, give me a break you guys, and phones and access to the World Wide Web, nothing is ever going to be truly original. We are always going to pull from other things. I pull a lot from authors like Clive Barker, Stephen King, Anthony Burgess, and in that regard, nothing I do is ever truly going to be 100% originally mine. There is not an idea that exists that hasn't been altered from something else. There isn't anything where you can look at it and go, that is 100% original. I've never seen that before. That's dope. Things are awesome in the way they are, but you are always going to find similarities to other media and to other things. Which also brings us into our third point. Do not worry if something you write is super similar to something else. This was a concern I had a lot when I started writing. I pulled a lot from anime I was watching at the time, books I was reading. Uh, I had concocted this whole universe after I had watched Cloud Atlas that was based on like this one little part. And then Detroit Become Human came out and I was like, well, fuck. <laughs> So the third point is write what you love and don't worry about how original it is at first. You will have time in your editing and review phases to change things, alter things, and make things more to you than they are to the source material you may have borrowed from, be it intentionally, accidentally, or what have you. Point four, there is a difference between constructive criticism and criticism born to just be rude and hateful. This was something I had to learn in my writing class because my teacher at the time, Mr. Baker, was very much like, if you're going to criticize something, it has to be constructive. You can't just say, well, that fucking sucks. You have to explain, well, this character acts completely contradictory to how we have established them prior and things of that nature. Don't take all criticism like it's intentionally meant to be cruel because chances are the person that's criticizing you doesn't care where you took your inspiration from. They don't care, you know, what necessarily you're writing or why you're writing it. They are trying to help you realize what needs to change or what needs to be edited. They're trying to help. Some people are going to go, well, that's just garbage. And yeah. But the people that are like, well, this is why I think this way, maybe you can change this. They're not trying to be rude or hateful when they're giving constructive criticism. And constructive criticism is incredibly important to take because there's not an author in the world, there's not an artist in the world that never had constructive criticism, that never, that was never criticized. That's just, that's just not how it works. Point five. Once my brain reminds me what point five was. Um... Do not trust your family or your friends to give you constructive criticism. Some of them will, but other people, but not everybody. Um, 
always look at outside sources for constructive criticism. Post parts of it on your Facebook feed, on Instagram, uh, read a part of it out if you've got a TikTok, put it up on something like fanfiction.net or AO3, you know, give yourself the opportunity to be criticized by people you don't know because they are more likely to give you worthwhile criticism than your family is. That's something I come into contact a lot with, like, my grandfather, I had, before he passed, I would send him some of my stuff. He's like, oh, this is great. And then I go back and reread it later. And I'm like, what drugs were you on? Like, what were you on that you read this and went, that's fantastic. And, you know, he's, he was a fan of Stephen King. So he got horror and that's predominantly what I write in. And brings us into point six. Do not limit yourself to a singular type of writing or a secular genre. There are genres that we are all more comfortable writing in. Some people really prefer writing romance, and some people really prefer writing action or horror or, you know, all that kind of stuff. But when it comes down to it, exploring other genres will widen the scope and write, write and widen your ability to write cohesively, consecutively. It will assist in your world building, your character development, because really, at the end of the day, a lot of stories do overlap. They, your genres are going to overlap in really important ways. Um, you know, the, the Phantom of the Opera is, at its heart, a love story. It's a terrifying love story. You know, it's not the kind of love story a lot of people will set out to write, but it's a horror movie as well. But like I said, at its heart, it is a love story and you will always have this overlap with your genres. And I think one of the biggest mistakes writers will make is holding themselves into just a singular genre to work with. You know, even Stephen King and Clive Barker, Dean Koontz, all of these writers that you look at and go, well, you write this certain way. It's not just that certain way. They have other genres mixed in with what they do and that's part of what makes them great writers part seven or point seven part seven it's Lilla. do not do not absolutely do not compare your writing to the writing of a master in i what i and what i mean by that is like you can look at Stephen King and go, well, he's got all these really great aspects to what he does, but you are not Stephen King. You are not Clive Barker. You are not Dean Koontz. You're not Anthony Burgess. You are not Daniel Steele. Um, I'm not going to say Stephanie Meyer because mm, I have feelings about that. Um, don't compare yourself to other people. We are our own worst critics, and what definitely does not assist with that is we all have this horrible habit of looking at what other people have done and going, well, what I do isn't any good because it doesn't sound like this. It doesn't look like this. It isn't this. Well, that's the whole fucking point. Comparing ourselves to other people, all that manages to do is discourage us. And that's not the case for everybody. That is definitely not the case for everybody. But I find that most of the time, probably 70% of the time, um, especially with me and things I've noticed in my family and with my friend groups and things like that and definitely things I noticed when I took creative writing I would see these comments it's like well you know what I do is not as good as what this other person wrote and I'm like but that's the beauty of it it doesn't have to be as good if you love what you do and you show that you love what you do through your writing or your art or and this is for anything someone is going to sit there and go, holy shit, that is amazing and I want that. I want to read that. I want more of that. So don't compare yourself to everyone else. Art styles don't, people don't develop their own art styles or their own writing styles by looking at Stephen King and going, well, I'm crap because I can't write like that, so I'm just going to give up. Developing your own style, which is point eight, is super important. Your own style of writing, and we're in point eight now, you guys, just, that was a horrible segue and I'm sorry. Your style of writing is what's going to define you as an author. Part of why Anthony Burgess does so well with A Clockwork Orange is because he did things with the English language that I haven't seen anybody do since. 
probably simply because they don't do it as well as he does. You know, Peter Benchley has a way of writing oceanic scenes and making us afraid. And it's specific to the way he writes. Your success as a writer isn't necessarily going to hinge on how well you have explored a concept. If Stephanie Myers is Twilight or Fifty Shades of Grey, I'm bitter about them both. I especially Fifty Shades, but there's a whole different video that's going to go over that, has taught us anything, it's that writing style is really what gets the point across. I write a lot in prose, in part because I started writing poetry first. That was like the first thing I ever really delved into, and that has affected the way I write literally everything else. I write very gothic and very poetically, and that style is what people appreciate. I've had a lot of people, and this is something we discussed really hardcore in the writing classes I'd taken, that the style in which I write and which other people write, that's what keeps books interesting. That's part of why I honestly think Stephen King has survived as long as he has. You know, a lot of his stuff feels aggressively repetitive. Uh, and the like, or he's writing sequels such as Dr. Sleep, which is a sequel to The Shining. It's the way he writes, the structure in which he writes, his style. Do not be afraid to develop your own style. You don't have to sound like anybody else, and that's fine. Point nine is uh, really more of a tip than anything else. If you're scared about learning how to write and this is definitely something I'm going to go over in a different video. If you're afraid of learning how to write a certain character, but you know the, a character that acts like the character you want to write, do not be afraid to write fanfiction. I shit you not. I have learned to write characters better via writing fanfiction for a character that already exists because I have the structure to work on. And then take that character, take that character's personality traits and write write like crazy. You want to write a character that reminds you of Dean Winchester? Write that fanfiction. I'm write an introspective fanfiction about the character. If you're uncomfortable or you're unsettled about how you want to write a character or write how they would react to X, Y, and Z, and this is especially helpful for things that tend to be a little more traumatic, like death, like themes of sexual assault, take characters that you know have reacted to that kind of thing before and write write how you observe them, write them in a similar situation, get yourself familiarized with things that happen and character traits and personalities by writing for characters that already have those traits and personalities. Fan fiction is an exceptional learning tool and I wish more people would utilize it and I'm always disappointed that they don't because people like stigmatize it so hard. Nobody cares that you want to see Gabriel kissed Sam Winchester, and nobody cares if you think Shinra Kusakabe should be with Arthur. I don't, but that's my own gripe. Or that Sakura should have been with Naruto. N nobody honestly cares. Like, nobody's gonna actively judge you for that. If it helps you learn to write, freaking do it, my guys and girls and days and thems and everybody in between. Explore your writing prowess through other characters. It is so helpful. Do not be afraid of the concept of writing fanfiction, even if it's just designed to be exploratory, to help you learn. It's not, it's no different than like buying right drawing guides or drawing characters that you love over and over and over again to get used to different facial and body shapes if you're an artist. Like, fanfiction is such a helpful tool. So point nine is don't be afraid to write fanfiction. Use it as a tool. And point 10, quite possibly the most important point about being a writer is that if you do not have the drive and you do not have the passion, you will fail. People do not write because it's going to make them a lot of money. Writing is about luck. It is about sending your manuscript to a hundred thousand people. And it's no different with scripts if you want to be a director or a screenwriter if you want to be a playwright or anything like that. It's no different for really anything. It's the same with art as well. Nobody owes you anything when it comes to what you do, and it is a hundred percent luck. 
100% it's luck. I am not a fan of J.K. Rowling, but even I have to admit her success with Harry Potter was due to the fact that she didn't know when to sit down, shut up, and say, fine, I lost. She persevered, she had the passion and the drive to get her books published. And that is exactly what ended up happening. You have to have drive and passion to be a writer. You can shit something out, but if it doesn't show that you care about your characters, if it's lackluster and boring, yes, there's a chance it'll get published, sure, but that chance is very slim, especially now, when people are very have become very selective. Yes, you can publish through Amazon, and yes, you can probably publish, I think you can publish through eBay as well, or you can publish on Patreon chapter by chapter. But if you want to make it into stories, your best bet is to love what you do. If you don't love what you do, and this is the same for anything, you are going to fail. Have passion, have drive, look at what you do and understand that nobody owes you the right to publish what you've written. Nobody has to look at what you do and go, fuck yes, fuck yes, I'm going to publish that today. Absolutely no one owes you that. It doesn't matter how long you've taken to write a story, develop your characters, but if you have passion and you have drive, and it shows, you have a better chance than everyone else that looked at writing and went, oh, this will be easy, and shat something out for the sake of shitting it out and hoping to make, to make bank, to make a mint, to make a million. You will have more of a chance of getting published when you have the passion drive for what you love. Luck is the pivotal point of getting anything published. You have to hope somebody loves what you do enough to put it out there, to want to put the money in and invest in having something you've written and put your heart and soul into published. And a lot of that, as I've said, it's going to be repetitive as crap, is having heart and soul in what you've done. So, with that said, those are 10 points that are very important to keep in mind when you are thinking about becoming a writer. Um, there's obviously more that does go into it, and I hope that you guys stick around to hear me rant more about things like character development, plot devices, um, keeping your character aspects well-balanced and well-maintained, uh, avoiding things like painful stereotypes, uh, and all of these are going to be future videos, and definitely stick around to uh, learn a little more with me. There is a secondary series that goes along with Amateur Author called Amateur Artist. Uh, that I will hopefully start doing at some point, but this is this is what I've got so far. Thank you for sticking around. Please hit that subscribe button if you like the sound of my voice or you just want to learn more. Thanks much! Bye!